Hiya, and welcome back to Dawn Chorus, the game that teaches us that Satan does exist, and his name is Klaus. Anyways, let's just hop right in. <laughs> Bjorn or Miko? <laughs> Miko Michael Looks fairly similar to what I've seen in the dream Just more real We like it Sauna or swimming pool Hatsune Mike <laughs> I'm gonna go to Devon. Entering the room, the first thing I see is Rune standing next to a row of lockers, taking off his shirt. I stop in my track, standing in the locker room door, not expecting to walk in on a buff, bare chested buff here. He notices me entering and raises a paw, greeting me. Oh, hello. Um, hi there. Feeling very awkward all of a sudden, I walk into the locker room and look around, avoiding Rune with my gaze. After all, it's Rune standing next to me, shirtless on top of that, just that would be enough to make me blush, but on top of that, the memory of the dream I had in the bus is still fresh in my head. Are you looking for someone? Devin is in the swimming pool already. Um, no, just came here to swim. Hey, don't be shy, we're all at the same camp, and we might as well get familiar with each other. My name is Rune, I study neuroscience. And I'm Arvo, studying cognitive science. I'm from Finland. I moved to Norway just this year. And it's nice to meet you. I take a quick glance at his naked torso, admiring his athletic build. He's very nice indeed. Okay, that's enough formalities. Now tell me, did you come here to swim or stare? He winks at me, grinning, and I can feel my cheeks getting hot. Oh no, was it really that obvious? If, as if someone in my diction... As if someone in my dictionary was up to no good, instead of coming up with a witty response, my mind draws blank. Hey, don't get so flustered, I'm just messing with you. He continues to undress, taking off his trousers. Okay, I definitely need to distract my, my attention elsewhere. Are you going to the swimming pool directly or taking another peek at Rune? We're going to make eye contact with Devin the entire time. We're just going to make eye contact. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy a healthy dose of prolonged eye contact. Prolonged eye contact. Prolonged eye contact. Lake is already sitting at our table, together with someone I don't know. A bat, perhaps? Wearing a poncho on top of that. We're just holding down control a lot. We're going with Miko, Travis, and Bjorn, Lake, and Jorgen, or Rune, and Devin. We're just speedrunning to get to Klaus. We're speedrunning. He really liked it. Because we're supportive up here. Rune or Lake? Oh, hiya. Welcome. I saw you created another account. Did your old one get hacked, Drax? Which one? Ah, shit. Do I, uh, do I need to, do I need to delete, not delete, uh, ban your old one? And why the hell do I still have Minecraft Launcher installed if I can't access it? I'm 
going to go with the bow. So, I don't know if you remember, but I lost the key to my room, and I was supposed to ask around and find another room for today. And, well, I'm asking you. Sure, no problem. You can stay in my room if you want. Thank you, Bjorn! A stronger gust of wind makes me shiver a bit. Bjorn notices that and moves closer to me, shielding me from the wind. It really is cold, though, so I move a bit closer to him, too, pressing my side against him. I couldn't do that in the cafeteria, so that's a nice bonus. And we're going to follow him. He casually walks off into the woods, disappearing between the trees. Ah, oh, fuck, I dropped a lighter. I definitely don't want to leave that. Where the fuck did it go? Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Come on, come on, poser. I found it. Sad day for Baron Joyers. I know. Oh my god, go forward, chair. He casually walks off into the woods, disappearing between the trees. Bjorn, I'm terribly sorry, but there's something I have to do. See you later. Hey, where are you going? Bjorn shouts after me, but I don't turn back. Suddenly, Klaus turns around, noticing me, and sprints off into the woods. I doubt he's a faster runner than me, though I'm taller than him, and he seems quite lanky. But running in deep snow is really hard, and Klaus proves to be more agile than me. Reaching the forest first and disappearing between the trees. Did I lose him again? Just when I'm ready to give up, I see his tail disappear behind one of the trees ahead of me. I lunge forward, but he's quicker than me, already a good few meters ahead. Where's he even going? Why am I even chasing him? Wait! Leaning against a tree, I pant heavily. Running at distance this short shouldn't tire me out, but snow makes running much harder. I can't chase him any longer, I don't even know where he ran off. For what? Suddenly hear Klaus's voice just behind me. I, why were you running away from me? Why were you chasing me? That's a good question. Although I never thought that he would actually reply to me. Because I couldn't catch you. Why were you following me at all though? Nobody told you that it's rude to spy on others. I was curious what you were doing in the forest at this hour and I actually just wanted to ask you but you were too fast. Curiosity killed the cat. It is true that us felines tend to be pretty nosy, but he is the cat here, not me. I don't really mind telling you, though. It's no secret. Right now, I'm just out for a walk. I found an interesting place, and I wanted to visit it again. As you're here anyway, care to join me? This might be the only chance I get to see what he's up to. Well, fine. I mean, what place do you mean? Is it far away? Too many questions, Arvo. Now leave the poor tree alone and come with me. Or don't. Ah. Uh Is he the Lorax? Is he speaking tree? Am I speaking tree? I turn around and see that I left some claw marks on the tree I was leaning on. I should be more careful. It's good that it was a tree and not a wall. Is Arvo the one slur? Nah, Arvo is one of the fish. Klaus is already walking further into the woods. Hey, wait for me! We're gonna die! I've been following Klaus into the deep forest for a while now. The darkness here is a bit unnerving. Klaus surely has better sight than me. I can barely see what's in front of me. I really hope he knows where he's going because all the trees here look the same and if not for the tracks we've been leaving in the snow I'd have troubles coming back myself. We aren't lost. Are we? Klaus? Do you always complain this much? Yes. I'm not complaining, I'm just concerned. Klaus doesn't say anything more, continuing to walk ahead. Another minute of trudging through the snow, we come out onto, the, onto a meadow. It's all bathed in the moon's pale glow, reflecting in the snow covering everything in sight. There are several different trails of paw prints in the snow, going in many directions. Either Klaus was here several times today, or it's a more known place. Wait, isn't this the meadow that I followed him to earlier? What's so special about this meadow? Look there. He points at the edge of the meadow, but I don't see anything there, just more snow and rocks. Oh, there's a rock that seems a bit too smooth. What is that? Instead of answering, Klaus starts walking towards it, gesturing for me to come closer to. I have many questions to ask him, but for now, I decide to play along and see where this will lead me. 
It's a tombstone. That explains the candle that I saw here. Now only a burned out remnant of it remains in the snow. I was walking around after lunch and stumbled upon this meadow and saw a candle burning in the snow. How weird is that? So of course I came closer to investigate. And I suspected him of doing some strange rituals here. He leans in and clears the snow from the tombstone. The inscriptions on it are mostly illegible, except for the deep ones that say... I don't know how to pronounce that. And I would feel bad if I attempted it. And I would feel bad if I didn't attempt it. I walk with the... Ghosts. We're silent for a while, just... We're silent for a while, just staring at the black letters. Who do you think is buried here? That's what I'd like to know. Why was that person buried specifically here, in the middle of nowhere? Was this place significant to them, or maybe they died here? What was their life like? Did they live nearby? I know nothing about that person apart from this little inscription, and yet for some reason I feel a connection with them. You know, I spent most of my life in self-imposed solitude, and I always enjoyed the in independence it gave me. But here, in this frozen middle of nowhere, maybe for the first time, I feel like I want to get to know someone. And it's a dead man. Wow. All because of this tombstone here. Not really, but let's say that it was a catalyst. I started to think, what's left of whoever was buried here? Not a literal sense, of course, but what is their legacy, Haya? Did they echo beyond their actual end or simply fade into nothingness? Forgotten. And so I felt sympathy for this person buried here, walking with the ghosts. I like the idea of being a wanderer who only perceives. I wish to have... I wished to have a step so light that my paws would leave no traces even in the snow. But maybe I was observing the wrong things, looking for meaning in the wrong places. If I don't press my paws into the snow, how will I experience its softness? Hear what sound it makes? Know what it means? I only nod, not really following or knowing what to make of this. It's really cold out here and we're just standing motionless. I'm slowly starting to freeze. And I, can, I already can barely feel my paws. That's fascinating, but how we head back to the guest house? I can feel my body freeze as we speak. If we can go. I just wanted to visit this place one more before the end of the day. I nod in response again, shivering. Either way, then, I have no idea how to come back from here. On it. Follow me. This was a weird experience. In more usual circumstances, I'd probably be weirded out, but right now I only want to be back in the warm guest house. Why didn't I move out to Chile or anywhere else? I bet I'd enjoy Patagonia. It sounds like a nice, warm place to live. Suddenly, I remember the very reason I ran out after Klaus. Say, we've met at this meadow earlier today, didn't we? When you were spying on me the previous time, correct? Ouch! Okay, now I understand why he was running away from me. I'd probably do the same in his place. So I thought I saw a wolf-like creature there. It was just this huge shadow emerging from the woods, and I panicked and ran away. But it wasn't any creature, am I right? Of course it wasn't any creature, silly. It was Dan. <laughs> it was Dan Chorus! It was Dan Chorus! Dan Chorus is real! It was Dan Chorus! Dan? A wolf from the U.S. who moved to a cabin out here. He noticed us at the meadow, and he hasn't talked with anyone for a long time, so he just wanted to say hi. So he lives nearby. His cabin is just next to that meadow. I could take you there tomorrow if you'd like to meet with him. Yes, visiting some strangers in the woods definitely sounds like a good idea. Although, frankly, it wouldn't be my first stupid decision during this trip. Oh, so did you two talk? For quite a long time, actually. He's mostly the reason why I started to reconsider some of my choices. He's the first person I met that I could call interesting. That would hurt if I wasn't focused on not freezing at the moment, but I guess his idea of what makes a person interesting might be a bit unconventional anyway. He's a writer and moved here to live in solitude too, isolated from the world. We talked a lot about writing, and he may have helped me a bit closer to the essence. The essence? I'm a writer too, and I'm looking for the essence of things. I blink in confusion. Surprisingly, his answers only prompt more questions. The more I ask, the less I feel like I know, so maybe I should stop asking for now. After a few more minutes, we finally walk out of the woods just next to the guest house. The terrace is already empty. There are no telescopes left, and Bjorn is nowhere to be seen. Well, no wonder we've been away for a good half an hour, probably. I'll have to apologize to him about that. Klaus, do you know which room is Bjorn's? No, but I know who'd know. 
Why do you ask? I'm supposed to sleep in his room tonight, but I can't remember the room number. Mm hmm. You can sleep in mine if you want. I stop in my tracks. That's an offer I definitely didn't expect. And I know it's crazy to even consider it, but... We want Dan. Fuck you, Klaus. We want Dan. But we gotta go with you if we want... If we want Dan. We don't want Klaus. We want Dan. It's too alluring to pass on that. Who knows when I'm going to have another occasion... Fucking, fucking lag. You gotta stick with the creepy cat to see Dan Chorus himself, obviously. Story alluring to pass on that. Who knows when I'm going to have another occasion to question him about stuff. I feel like I fell too deep into the rabbit hole to get out now anyway. You know what? That sounds good. Wait, do you have two beds in your room? I do. Don't worry. Okay, great. Can we go now before I freeze? Ah, lovely warmth. It'll be a short while before my paws warm up, but entering the guest house, I exhale with relief, feeling the gust of warmth on my face. Oh, I still haven't had my supper. I hope it's still there. You can go it's ahead. It's time to drink water. Just give me its number. No need. I'll go. Look. It's time to drink well, water. Well, okay, that's nice of you. It's Four time to drink all, water. I suppose everyone is in their rooms already. It's completely It's time to drink too. water. The sound reaches us apart from the sound of our paw steps. Quite eerie. No, no, that was me. I'm sorry. When we walk next to the lobby, I see a silhouette standing at the front of the door and looking outside. Long ears, denim jacket. Is that Miko? What is he doing here at this time? He turns around and notices us, his eyes shining in the darkness. A wave too many raises his paw and responds. None of us says anything, though. Hmm. I look over at all the tables in the cafeteria, but there's no sign of my food anywhere. Someone must have taken it, and I'm not blaming them. It's been a while. Hmm. If you're in a dire need of calories, I have some instant ramen in my room. Not that hungry, thanks. I was looking forward to trying more of the food they serve here, but I can wait until the morning. I am a bit hungry, but not desperate enough to finish my day with a bowl of sodium and palm oil. Besides, eating this late at night supposedly isn't healthy. Too bad the food was delicious. Especially the apple cake. Mm! Yeah, too bad I couldn't try it. The crust was perfectly baked and crumbled easily, and the hint of cinnamon enhanced the flavor. Mmm. And they didn't skimp on us. The slices were really big. An urge to slap him raises within me. I'm sure he's doing this on purpose. Okay, come on. No point in lingering here. Miko must have headed back to his room. He wasn't in the lobby when we left the cafeteria. Actually, the whole guest house feels completely still. It's almost as if the building was suddenly deserted and we're the only two left behind here. The pale glow of LED lamps in the corridor barely lit up the space. The shadows threatening to consume it at any moment. Did we suddenly end up on the set of The Shining? Next to me, Klaus strolls forward completely unaffected, his step confident and his eyes dreamy. His tail sways slightly behind him, showing a cold disinterest in his surroundings. Or maybe these are exactly the surroundings he feels at home with. We climb up the stairs to the first floor and continue almost to the end of the corridor. Klaus unlocks and opens the door, walking in first. I enter the room after him and close the door, taking off the coat I'm wearing and hanging it next to the entrance. First thing I notice is the smell of the incense permeating the air. The room itself looks very familiar, but I guess all the rooms in this guest house are pretty much the same. Despite the incense, it also looks very normal. It surprises me a bit, but I assumed the room would match the personality of its inhabitant. Now that I think of it, he probably didn't spend much time here. There's some candles on the desk, and that's all. Are you sure you don't want anything to eat? Thanks, I'll be fine. If anything, I'm feeling tired, not hungry. That unplanned walk into the forest really drained me. Hop into bed then, or take a shower first if you want. I shower in the evenings, and it was a long day, so I'm definitely taking one now. Hope you don't mind me being here, by the way. From what I've gathered, you seem to prefer being alone. I usually do, but not today. Besides, you'll come in handy. Okay, that actually sounded a little bit sinister. Should I be afraid of falling asleep here with him in the same room? How exactly? Don't worry about it. Go take your shower. Um, sure. Just let me grab the bathroom kit. You have a spare towel? There are two in the bathroom. Both are fresh, so you can use whichever. Just not two at the same time. Noted. I do as I said. I put down my camera bag on the desk, take out the bathroom kit from the side pocket, and walk with it to the bathroom. Good luck. I rather hope I won't need it. Thanks, though.
We're gonna die. Ooh, finally alone. As friendly as Klaus seems, he's pretty intense. And a bit scary. Feel a bit on edge around him, never knowing what he might be up to. Anyway, I spent almost the entire day walking around with others, so this brief moment of solitude is very welcome. Time to commence the evening maintenance. First, brush my teeth, paying special attention to my long canines. I'm glad they had a kit with a toothbrush designed for Fela Day. Those bigger and wider universal ones are sometimes painful to use. Then I undress myself down to the boxers, putting all my clothes on the toilet lid, first making sure that it's clean and look at myself in the mirror. My face looks tired, but after a day like this, it's not surprising. Short nap I had after lunch energized me, but only for a little while. I didn't get much sleep tonight to begin with. Oh my god, thank you for the follow! Thank you. And there's nothing that would make me happier now than a comfortable bed. What a weird day, and what an interesting turn of events. Klaus didn't really strike me as a friendly type at first, so his invitation took me by surprise. He said that he wants something from me, though, or at least that I'll be useful to him. So maybe it wasn't entirely out of his goodwill. Who knows, I'll probably find out soon. That guy living in the cabin. Dan, was it? Klaus said he started to reconsider some of his choices after meeting with him. I wonder what Dan told him that had such an effect on him. I can't help but feel intrigued by it all. I'm still not convinced if visiting some random person in their cabin in the middle of the woods was a good idea. Maybe they're in some arrangement and Klaus is bringing him victims to slaughter or worse? Maybe that's how I'm supposed to be useful. I shudder at the thought, feeling a wave of cold sweat on my back. And I can simply not go there with Klaus or tell someone else before I go out. Either way, as creepy as it sounds, that's all really unlikely, especially if they just met today. Shaking these thoughts off, I take off my boxers, letting them fall to the ground. Then I grab the shampoo and conditioner from the bathroom kit and hop into the shower. The water is warm and pleasant. Wasting no time, I open the shampoo and start rubbing it into my fur, starting with my head. I continue with relaxing ritual until I'm all clean. Then I open the conditioner and apply it generously, brushing it into my wet fur. It's unbranded, but it smells nice. Now I smell nice, too. I finally rinse my whole body again and turn off the water. I step out of the shower and dry myself with a fresh towel, which takes some time when you're all covered in thick feline fur. I'm finished in a few minutes, bless modern technology for those thick, super-absorbing towels, and only now I realize something. I don't have any clean clothes, so I need to put on the same ones from today. I wish I at least had a fresh pair of boxers. At least I didn't sweat that much today and already took one shower, so I guess it could be worse. I'm gonna pull up the sensor then. I'm going to skip the t-shirt this time. It's warm enough without it here, and I doubt Klaus would even notice. Wearing only boxers, I open the door and step out of the bathroom. I really needed this. I feel lighter and fresher, the weight of the day washed away from my body. Klaus is sitting on a bed with a notebook in one pawn, a pencil in the other, but looking at a ceiling instead. He doesn't seem to notice me, so I approach him closer before speaking. Hey, I'm back. He only nods in response. I will. His gaze still focused on the same point above him. I look at him, curi look at him with curiosity. His upper lip quivers slightly, causing his whiskers to shake rhythmically. I didn't take a good look at him before, actually. When looking at others for the first time, we often miss the small details, like the quivering lip or the pointy shape of Klaus's ears here that I haven't noticed before. Or are you writing? Another nod. Maybe I'm bothering him, but this time I want to hear some answers. It's time for an open question. What are you writing? Hmm. Nothing yet. Oh. You seem quite focused. I thought you were trying to come up with the right words or something. I'm not writing. I'm searching. When he gets in bed with Arvo? Okay, so we're a little safe. Searching? For what? I told you, I'm looking for the essence of things. And where are you looking? Inside, outside too, it doesn't matter. The essence is everywhere, yet it's near impossible to grasp. You need to look at a single thing in detail and everything from distance at the same time. Reduce to symbols and examine every facet to understand it. What do you have written already? Nothing yet. I need to find the meaning first, and then capture it in the simplest words possible. And only then can I start writing. 
To me, it looks more like he tangled himself up in an impossible task, but I already learned not to question his ideas. Right now I'm sleepy and I just want to get into the bed and rest. You can go take a shower, now I'm heading to bed. Oh, right. Klaus closes the notebook with a loud clap, puts it down on the bedside table, and jumps off the bed. I'll be back in a moment. And now I'm pulling up the sensor. He continues to the bathroom, only taking a fresh pair of underwear with him. Guess he sleeps without a t-shirt, too. Turning off the light and get into the bed and cover myself up to my neck, feeling the soft bedding envelop me. Ah! The bed is definitely an upgrade to both the bus seat and the couch in the lobby I fell asleep on earlier today. And I nearly melt on the soft mattress. I'm already dozing off. I could find the willpower to stay awake, but I don't really need to. I will have some luck. Klaus won't turn on the light after he comes back and we'll just go straight to bed. I couldn't be mad if he didn't, though. This is his room, after all. Maybe he was just making fun of me with the whole essence thing. He's actually writing some fanfic and doesn't want to admit it. Um, yeah, that's probably it. I mean, I could expect everything from him. Him and his quivering lip and long, pointy ears. Was he with us at the dinner? No, I don't think so. Where did I even meet him, then? There was the forest, you know, the lunch. He stood there at the edge of the woods with a candle in his paw. The scent of burning incense, the beastly paw pressing down on my chest. Everything is tangled up. The end and the beginning, indistinguishable. Klaus? My voice comes out raspy and quiet, like sandpaper tearing up the black silence. A silhouette is standing before me. He isn't, but I still don't trust it. As I call out his name, he comes closer. Klaus? What are you do? Break and protest, Klaus lifts the duvet off me and lies down beside me. The bed isn't very big, so I have to move all the way to the edge of it to make enough space for him, but it still feels cramped. If I take your bed, you want me to switch? No, stay just as you are right now. He snuggles up to me, pressing his slender body against mine, and I freeze in surprise. He either understands that as complying or simply doesn't care because he pulls me even closer to him. Klaus, what are you do- I told you you'd come in handy. Is he purring? Wow, he really is purring. I'm not sure what to do. I've never been in one bed with anyone before. Well, not like this. Sleepovers with friends definitely don't count, especially when you're all like 12. This is something different. Trying not to be awkward, I put my arm around him, snuggling him back gently. He in turn rests his head on my chest. I had no idea he could be this affectionate. Nothing in the way he acts even hinted at that. Why would he do this with me, though? Maybe he saw me cuddling with Miko and got the wrong idea? Anyway, this is pretty exciting, though. I never imagined I'd be doing this sort of s stuff with Klaus, of all people. Wait for him to go further, but he doesn't. He simply lies there snuggled up to me, his head on my chest, and seems to already be falling asleep. I can feel his heartbeat, and his warmth, and the steady rhythm of his breathing. He is even more lightweight than I thought he would be. My body relaxes instinctively. It's really pleasant and comforting, the warmth of another body next to mine. I start rubbing his back slowly, and he reacts with intensified purring. His fur is softer than I expected, silky smooth and well brushed. He's already asleep, or at least faking it well. Either way, it feels surprisingly comfortable. Now, this is an unexpected end of the day. Before I can feel my eyelids closing by themselves again, and Morpheus's arms welcome me back. Day 2 A deep sleep without dreams, undisturbed and restful. A heavy lid separating me from the world. I'm drifting in pure nothingness, safe and peaceful. The lid comes off and the light of the morning hits my eyes. I feel oddly light, as if some weight I had gotten used to was lifted from me. I'm alone in bed. Klaus must be up already. I don't see him anywhere, though. He must be in the bathroom getting ready for the day. I roll out of bed, feeling excitement for today well up in me. The air here feels a bit stuffy. I'm groaning and stretching out across the room to open the window. Cold wind pushes through the gap and blows through my fur, tickling up my naked torso. Okay. I'm pulling down the sensor. If Klaus cock appears, I'm going to scream. The sky outside is gray and dark, hanging heavily above the snow-covered land. It must have been snowing since last night. I press my snout to the window pane, watching the snow-clad landscape. My thoughts are still a bit chaotic, but a quick morning maintenance should help me shake off any remnants of sleep. 
and I'm pulling it back up. I'll have to wait until I until Klaus is done with his though. Just in case a knock at the bathroom door. Klaus? There's no response. Must have left the room early before I even woke up. Brushing my teeth and washing my face, I'm still left with a few minutes until breakfast. I haven't checked my phone since supper. Maybe I should do that now. Grab my phone and sit down at the edge of the bed, opening the messages. Were you staying tonight? You found a room? That's an easy question. I can answer that right away. Yeah, I ended up with Klaus. See you at breakfast. It's also one from Miko. Hey, Arvo. Did you find a room for tonight? Oh, more people are concerned about me than I thought. That's nice. Yes, I stayed with Klaus. Think you met him at breakfast yesterday? I wonder what the mischievous cat is doing now. Maybe he went for a walk before breakfast. That sounds like him. Actually, nothing even hints at the fact that Klaus spent the night here with me. There's no hollow in the place where he laid next to me. Maybe I just imagined him? No, that wouldn't make sense. Whose room would it be, then? Suddenly, I remember about Bjorn. I didn't tell him that I'd be sleeping over at Klaus's room yesterday. The poor guy must have been wondering where I went. I'll apologize to him when I see him. So, in the bus stop, the latest. It could have been three minutes until... It's already three minutes until breakfast, so I put my... So I put the phone down and glance at my clothes hanging from a chair. I hate wearing the same t-shirt two days in a row, even if it's clean, but what can you do? A quick sniff confirms my suspicion. Running after Klaus in a warm jacket made my clothes smell like sweaty tiger. I really don't want to put them on. Wanting to postpone the inevitable as much as possible, I grab my bag and take out my camera from it to take a photo of the room that's not my own. I've only taken one instant photo, and this room, and this empty room is something I'd like to remember. I the camera up, and then I notice something at the bottom of my bag. It's a key. Put the camera on the table and grab the key to check the wooden tag attached to it. A key to my room. I blink in disbelief. Don't tell me I had it with me all this time. Must have been really out of it yesterday morning if I put the key there. That's the last spot I'd search in, especially under the camera. What's important is that I have access to my room and I don't have to wear these dirty clothes. Room is just next door, so get, so going there dressed in boxers only should be fine. Grab all my stuff and press the door handle. Klaus left the door open and likely took the key with him, so I leave it open too. As I leave the room, I notice Lake in the corridor. Wave to him awkwardly with the palm holding my t-shirt in. He waves back, only making it more awkward. Open the door to my room and close them behind me as fast as I can. That didn't go very well. I'll have to catch Lake later and explain what happened to him. It's good to be back here, though. I don't have much time to familiarize myself with my room yesterday, but at still, at least it's mine. Look around at absorbing every small detail, from the orders of the colors on the carpet to the shade of the ceiling, beams, and lamps. The air here smells of clean laundry. Makes me think of pleasant things only, like flowers and meadows. Even if I tried to stop myself, I couldn't. I woke up straight to the bed and lied down on it, letting the soft bedding envelop me. I might be a tad late for the start of breakfast, but we're only leaving in an hour and a half, right? I want to stay here a while longer and just enjoy having my room back. My thoughts circle back to Klaus. Where could he have gone? It's weird to cuddle with someone through the night and then just disappear in the morning. It was really nice, though. Once I relaxed enough to enjoy it, I forgot how comforting physical contact could be. It felt similar to hugging with Miko, even if me and Klaus are nowhere near as close. At least that's how it used to feel before everything between us got complicated. I should have asked Klaus for his phone number yesterday, then at least I could have asked him where he is now. Should be in the cafeteria for breakfast, though, or in his room afterwards. In any case, finding him shouldn't be a problem. There's nothing specific I'd like to discuss with him, but his sudden disappearance is puzzling. And yesterday he told me he could introduce me to Dan, and I have to admit, I am curious who this guy might be. Better get up and go for breakfast, then. Klaus isn't here. What's worse, I only see Rune and Bjorn at our table, and they're almost done eating. The cafeteria is half full, and the door to the outside is open, letting in some cold wind. The world outside is still dark and gray, as if someone drained all the color from it. Hey guys, where's the rest? Morning, Arvo. If you're looking for Miko and Lake, they left a few minutes ago. Good morning. Bjorn smiles at me, but the smile doesn't reach his eyes. He looks dejected, slumped in his chair. Ah, snap, can I sit here? Sure, so go ahead. I sit down and look at my paws, coiling and unfurling my fingers. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Ah, Bjorn, by the way, I couldn't find you after I came back with Klaus and ended up sleeping over in his room. Couldn't remember which room was yours. I hope you weren't waiting for me. It's fine, don't worry. You heard the news already, Arvo? Hmm? What news? We're snowbound. So much snow fell last night that the bus can't get here and the snowplow won't get here through before the lectures start. So we're watching them here instead. What? Who said that? Devin announced it just before the breakfast was served. At least they managed to talk the university into streaming the lectures for us. Which is better than nothing, although they'll only be streaming from the main lecture hall. Oh, that's too bad. I wanted to see some of the smaller ones. Me too. Good thing it's only for today. I was looking forward to the trip to the town too. This sucks. Right up there, yeah. But there's something we can do about it. Other than learning from the lectures, we will be 
able to see and enjoying this place. It's not that bad, at least we're stuck in a nice guest house after all. Though, I'll have to spend some time working on a project later anyway. What kind of project? Something for the university, I don't want to bother you with technical details. I nod and take a bite of the pastry with poppy seeds, it's sweet but not too much, and the dough is deliciously flaky. I'm going to miss the food here after we come back. It's really good, yeah. When are you done eating, I'll go rest a bit before the lectures. Everyone, one question before you go, have you seen Klaus anywhere? A black cat wearing a white shirt and a coat if you don't know him? Hmm, <clears throat> I don't think so, certainly not at our table. Thanks, I'll wait for him here then. See you later. See ya. I'm done too, I'd better go. And I'm left alone at the table. The cafeteria is getting emptier too, looks like most of the students got up early today. I sit, a, I sit and sip a cup of coffee slowly, watching the gray sky undulate slowly like an inverted, unquiet sea. My thoughts mimic it, drifting from one topic to another, passing through me without a trace. Meanwhile, the cafeteria slowly empties until I'm the last person here. Yet, Klaus is nowhere to be seen. Arvo, what are you doing here? Suddenly, Devin enters the cafeteria, carrying a projector and a bunch of cables with him. Good morning, Devin. Got lost in my thoughts. No problem. I just came here to prepare everything for the live stream. We'll have to leave the room soon, though, to let the staff clean up after breakfast. By the way, you will get the key to your room a bit later, sadly, after the road is traversable again. That should be before the end of the lectures, so you'll have your room back by dinner time. My cheeks get hot with embarrassment. I almost forgot about the whole thing already and didn't tell the staff I found the key. I found the key to my room this morning. Apparently, I put it in my camera bag. I didn't check because I always keep my keys in my pockets. Ah, uh, that's good. I'll call the office and tell them the key isn't needed anymore, then. I nod, my thoughts still mostly elsewhere. By the way, have you seen Klaus today? Klaus, the black cat? Yeah, him. No, I don't think so. Even more puzzling. Rune said that Devin was here before breakfast was served, so Klaus likely wasn't here before I arrived. Maybe I should give up on looking for him and just carry on with my day. Thank you, Devin. Do you need any help here, maybe? Thanks, I'll manage. I'll get going, then. I should grab a notebook before the lectures start, at least. Sure. Don't be late. The first lecture starts at 9 o'clock. I finish the rest of my coffee in one gulp and leave the room. There are many risk factors for dementia and other neurological age-related diseases, including genetics, blood pressure, physical activity, and other lifestyle choices. A slower cognitive decline was observed in patients adhering to the Mediterranean diet, and a correlation with the consumption of omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fats was observed as well. Lecturer's voice lulls me. The topic of the lecture is quite interesting, but my mind is elsewhere. Next to me, Lake snores lightly, but it looks so peaceful that I decide against waking him up. I thought that Klaus might come to one of the lectures, but so far I haven't spotted him at all. Did he even come here to learn? I feel myself getting angry at the cat. Is he actually doing anything in the science club, or did he just join for the benefits? But look who's talking. I haven't even opened my notebook yet. Oh, who am I kidding? I won't be able to focus on the lectures before I find Klaus. Maybe I'll see him again, see him somewhere during the break. Miko asked me to go on a walk with him, but I might check the rest of the guest house first. Snow everywhere, covering everything I can see. White, reflective, shapeless, so bright it's blinding me. It covers even me. If I stood like this for a few hours, I would become a snow mound myself. Arvo, you're awfully quiet today. Is something troubling you? I turn towards Miko. He's looking at me with worry, the sampler he was playing with lying on his backpack next to him. I'm not that quiet, not more than usual at least. I've known you long enough to see if there's something wrong. Ignore his concerns or tell him about Klaus. Fucking back. Ah! I'm gonna spill the tea. Not exactly wrong. You remember Klaus? The black cat? He's not exactly easy to forget. I saw him in the forest yesterday, acting really strange. When I saw him later that day, I ran after him to get some answers. I ended up sleeping over at his room, but in the morning he disappeared somewhere. He left before I even woke up, and I woke up rather early. He left the door open and vanished into thin air. The only place I didn't check was the cabin where Dan lives. But I don't even know where it is, only the general direction. Going there alone in this weather doesn't sound like a good idea, though. It's already getting late. There's just 15 minutes of the break left. Should we head back? I... I think I'll stay here. I'm not that interested in the next lecture, and I'd like to finish this piece before that. You can find the way back to the guest house yourself, right? Sure, between the two of us, I was always the one with a better sense of direction. See you in a while, then. Sure. I thought about skipping lectures altogether, but in the end, I decided that I had nothing better to do. 
So here I am, hearing about quantum dots and their applications in experimental therapy, regretting my decision. I think I'll just go take a leak and not come back. Stand up and walk between other students to the exit. The only nice thing about remote lectures is that I don't feel the lecturer's eyes following me to the door. I close the door behind me, clutching my still empty notebook. Come on over, pull yourself together. Why am I like this? Can't I just rein in my curiosity for half a day? With a sigh, I head to my room to get my jacket. We're gonna meet Dan. We're gonna meet Dan Chorus. Should I turn left here already? The forest definitely looks different during the day than it did last night, when I was chasing Klaus. I was sure we went past that arching tree before the clearing, but I don't recognize this place. I think I'm lost. At least I can always go back by retracing my paw steps, but I didn't come here to give up this easily. Even if I've already been walking for half an hour. I walk deeper into the forest. Dense branches come close to me. Dense branches close over me, obscuring the light, and I walk in the dusk, stumbling on the roots hidden under the snow. The forest around me feels like one living organism, indifferent to my presence. Still, I can't help but feel like an intruder. I push through the branches in the snow, trying to find any familiar shapes or patterns to no avail. I have no idea where I am, and I'm making zero progress. Another lonely cock sounds from somewhere in the distance. I stop and look up at the sky, searching for the calling bird. Branches like hands reaching out to the sun, tuning in like antennas to heaven, waiting for a new dawn. Not in the mood for lectures. I jump startled, almost tripping over my own feet. My heart beats faster, pumping adrenaline through my dilating veins. Klaus, where the hell have you been? Here and there. Mostly here, though. There was not much interesting happening back in the guest house. What about the lectures? What about breakfast? I brought food with me, and I didn't see anything interesting in the schedule. You know, theoretical knowledge comes in handy, but I always preferred a more hands-on approach. How did you find me? Oh, easily. The lectures should be concluding about now, so I went to fetch you from the guest house. But I had it. But I heard someone tripping on roots repeatedly, so I took a detour to see who was making so much noise. You got lucky. I rubbed my neck in embarrassment, looking away. Was I really this loud? Why were you looking for me, though? I told you I'd introduce you to Dan, didn't I? More like suggested it could happen, if I'd be up to it. Yes, but it was obvious you were interested, and when I say something, I mean it. Come on, now. Dan has started cooking already. You'll help with the vegetables. Wait, cooking? Yeah, he cooks for himself anyway, so he invited us to share a meal with him. What about our dinner at the guest house? We'll miss it. It will make someone who wants to go for seconds happy, then. Ah, uh, ah, uh, um... I want to argue with his logic, but I can't. Cooking with Dan Chorus. <laughs> Looks like I really don't have a say in this, do I? Klaus is right. I am curious enough to follow. I follow in his paw steps, careful not to trip this time. Oh, this looks kind of ominous. Though the cabin itself looks better than I expected. It's situated on a meadow, picturesque and cozy. If not for the weather, this would be a perfect perfect postcard view. This place must look stunning at night with northern lights shining above. It's the kind of scene that wins photographers' awards. Now it's just early evening, though, dark and gray. Chilling, isn't it? If you've watched too many horror films, maybe. I haven't. I don't like films. Come on now. Dan is waiting for us. I gulp. The gravity of the situation finally hits me now that the cottage is a real thing standing in front of me and not just a vague idea of an adventure. I'm about to go into a stranger's cottage that's in the middle of nowhere with a guy from uni who I know next to nothing about. Klaus, I don't know if this is a good idea. Having second thoughts. What's up? You've never visited someone in their own home. Uh, we have! However! Oh, hiya. Welcome. However, there is a huge difference between being in someone else's home and possibly getting murdered. I don't- I'm sorry, Klaus, but I don't feel like getting murdered. How thoroughly and I enjoy having the blood pump throughout my body. I very much enjoy that. And Arvo's on the menu. Oh no. <laughs> Not someone I didn't know. You're about to get to know Dan. Klaus closes the distance to the cabin in a few steps and knocks at the door. The door opens and he walks in, gesturing to me to follow him. For a moment, I want to turn away and go back to the guest house, but that would be rude, wouldn't it? I close the door, leaving the cold forest behind me. It's so warm here, the heat seeps through my fur, warming my numbing face and paws. 
Room smells of cooking, a mouth-watering aroma of tomatoes and paprika. It starts salivating instantly. I didn't even notice when I had gotten so hungry. Holy shit, it's Dan Chorus. And I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm just gonna... Self-voicing enabled. Dan, God determined dog. Jack E.R. Dan. Det E.R. Hygela Game O. Dan. I'm pretty sure that's Yeg Er Dan. Sorry, my knowledge of Norwegian is pretty basic, but it's nice to meet you too. Do you speak Finnish or English? How should his voice be? What should Dan Chorus have as a voice? How should the Dan Chorus himself sound? Devin 2.0. Ah, uh, my apologies. Klaus didn't tell me you are a foreigner, too. I am. I moved to Norway just a few months ago for studies. Where are you from? I'm an American. I lived in Washington for most of my life. I learned a bit of Norwegian before coming here. I'm not very good at it, either. Oh, Washington! Life in the capital must be pretty good. He doesn't seem scary at all. I was sure Klaus would find a real weirdo, but this guy seems to be okay. I guess you have to be at least a bit crazy to live in a place like this for most of the year. Must be a drastic change from a capital city of the United States. Not that, Washington. It's a state where Seattle is and where it rains all the time. Why does everyone assume that Washington is just... Wa Why does everyone assume that when we say Washington, they think we mean Washington, D.C.? Sometimes we mean Washington State. That is that is the only beef that I have with people who don't know the U.S. That that is the only beef I have. I fucking hate it here. But please don't stand at the door, though. Come on in. Sit wherever you like. Only now I look around the cabin. It's nothing out of ordinary. It looks just like a usual cabin in the woods does. There's a kitchenette with an electric stove, a table with two benches deeper in the room, a separate hearth for heating, and a mezzanine that likely serves as a, best, as a bedroom. At one wall, there's also a desk and an impressive collection of books spanning whole two cabinets. I can't see from here, but something tells me that if I checked, all the books would be neatly organized by genres and sorted by authors. It's all very tidy and makes an inviting impression. Dan definitely takes care of this place and it shows. Oh, it does. It's a nice cabin. It has a homely feel to it. Thank you. It is my home after all. By the way, Klaus mentioned you might need some help in the kitchen. He did? Oh, he was just messing with you. He insisted on helping me, stubborn as he is, but we're already done with everything. Besides, I invited you for dinner. You are my guest. I can't put any work on you. Sit back and don't worry. Food will be ready in a moment. Me the Klaus. Boy, then if you don't get you knock off Nekajishi character looking ass out of here. Looking like you've just dumped green paint on your hair and called it hair dye. This is what I could come up with as a roast. Please laugh. <laughs> I sit down on one of the benches at the table. It's simple wooden construction, perfectly plain but not uncomfortable. It's really warm here thanks to the small hearth, so I take off my jacket and put it on the floor behind me. Dan walks away to the kitchenette, grabs a spatula, and stirs the contents of a wide pot. In the meantime, Klaus sits down next to me, eyeing me with interest. I'm impressed, you know. I didn't really think you would come. You're an interesting one, Arvo. I guess my curiosity is stronger than my common sense, but I doubt it's a good thing. If you're not curious, then you're already dead inside. Hard like a stone. Calcified. A frozen boulder. The death of curiosity is a burial of the soul. Oh, I'm starting to understand why these two hang out together. Good thing I still have a lot of it, then. By the way, what are you cooking? It smells heavenly. Dan approaches us with a tray of three bowls, their contents steaming. Simple like so. It's a Hungarian stewed dish made with peppers, onions, and tomatoes. He puts down the tray in the middle of the table, revealing a large platter of thick-cut bread served alongside the stew, and sits down on the opposite bench. It's a simple meal, but I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you. I'm grateful for the invitation, let alone the food. It's a host's duty to feed their guests. 
No, let's eat. It's best consumed hot. We grab our bowls full of the colorful stew and a slice of bread. The bread seems to be homemade with a crunchy crust and a delicious smell. It's even still warm. Take a spoonful of Alexo. It's spicy. Spicier than I thought, but nothing I couldn't handle. It's really good. It tastes very fresh as if the vegetables were just picked from the garden. Not in this weather and climate, unfortunately. I am growing peppers myself. I have a few pots with them, but the majority of the ingredients come from the store. Respect for the ingredient can really elevate a dish. I've never tried Lexo before. But a simple... But I love simple dishes like these that focus on basic ingredients with minimal processing. I cut the tomatoes for it. Wait, no, wrong voice. I cut the tomatoes for it. Klaus smiles while eating, seemingly in high spirits. So, I suspect you have some questions, Arvo. Am I wrong? No, the situation is a bit puzzling to me. It's surreal, but at the same time feels oddly unusual. Usual. I'd like to know more about you. I know you're from the U.S., but when and why did you move here? The place where I lived, while it inspired me immensely, felt too familiar. I was seeking solitude, and I found it here, in this remote cabin I bought from the daughter of its previous owner. I met her in my hometown when she was on a tour with her band, and we became friends. The cabin was in a poor condition when I got it. I renovated it myself, bought some new, brought some new furniture, and some I made on my own, like this table we're sitting at. Why were you seeking solitude? And if that's the case, why did you invite Klaus and me here? I was seeking solitude to see further than before, to dive deep into myself and the nature that surrounds this place. I had things I had to think through, and then I wanted to forget all the thoughts and melt into the world around me. The borders of the consciousness flutter and blur. The wind pushes through, sh shattering the boundary. I got here this summer, and I plan on staying here over the winter and then coming back. And why I invited you here? This place gives me plenty of solitude. It's remote enough that I don't get visitors at all. An occasional trip to town for groceries is all the interactions with others I have. So when I saw someone walking here visiting the grave of the previous owner of this cabin, I simply got curious. Klaus wanted to bring you along, and I had nothing against it. Closing the doors and windows and locking myself in is the opposite of what I want to do here. So what exactly are you doing here? I'm writing mostly. Though being here, I got into painting, too. It's endlessly relaxing. Ah, right. Klaus mentioned something about Dan being a writer yesterday. Were you right? Mostly poems. They're concise and can carry a lot. A poem can hold the same ideas as a whole novel in just a few lines. Writing them feels like getting to the heart of things. To something that's beneath. Something real. Poems strive to touch the heart of the experience of being a person. Of existing. To be a writer is to look for meaning in apparent meaninglessness of the day's passing. Yes, well said. I'm learning from you, after all. Wait. I'm learning from you, after all. Do you think there really is a solid meaning? When you think about it, no, not really. When you put down the books and go out for a walk to meet with your friends, you can feel it. It's nebulous. It's formless. It slips out of your grasp. If you try to inspect it, you inevitably come to a conclusion it's simply not there. Yet our experience of it is real. And that's why you can't write about it directly. It merges as the in-between. Isn't happiness the meaning? I would argue that happiness isn't a point itself. It's what you experience when you're at peace with the world around you, and through it you can look for meaning. Isn't happiness just, well, happiness? You know, what you feel when you have a good day, when things are going right, when you eat the food you like. I could get into details and talk about oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, but I doubt Dan would understand me at all. The discussion would be on two completely different levels. Happiness is not the same as joy. It's not when you've fulfilled all your ambitions and dreams and achieved everything you wanted to achieve. Happiness is when you wake up every day thinking how good it is to be alive. Happiness is loving life unconditionally. Real happiness can only be found inside. That makes sense. Wouldn't this be debilitating, though? Distracting from achieving anything? No. This true happiness motivates like nothing else. When you're truly happy, you want to share that happiness. Do something with it. This happiness cannot sit still. You seem to have been thinking a lot about this. There's one dilemma related to happiness I was thinking about that I encountered during my studies, and I'm curious about your opinion. If you could hack the brain into feeling happiness, would that be moral? Oh, but we can. That's what drugs like opium or heroin do. And no, I don't think it's moral. If happiness was the point of being, then we should all lie down and keep injecting ourselves with drugs. 
yet such an image evokes only repulsion. For me, it's clear that the point lies elsewhere. I don't agree with you. Not about the nature of happiness, but I don't think it's useless, useful. Distracting at best. If I'd be at peace with the world around me, I'd be. if I'd be fully satisfied, then there wouldn't be anything left for me to do. The search never ends because there are no final answers. About the meaning, I think that the only source of meaning is what's beyond this world. Our experience is grounded in the reality around us, but we can reach deeper beneath this veil. Nothing in this world has any intrinsic value, yet we can feel the significance of things. That's why I'm sure there has to be something more, something we can feel beneath the surface, something we can tap into. I refuse to believe that this mortal shell is all I am. I'm done, thank you for the meal. Looking down at my plate, I see I finished all the likes there too and didn't even notice when. Thank you, it was delicious. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Any anyway, Dan, I think it's dark enough outside dark outside enough now. I'd like to try out what we discussed yesterday, if you'll allow. Sure. I'm curious about the results. Wait, what are you planning to do? Is something really cool. Hopefully. That doesn't really fill me with confidence, you know. I've been studying Telema and Enochian magic for some time. Evocations in particular. I practiced a bit, but I never found a good place for it. But this spot here, it's perfect, and I have you two here. You'll help me a bit. Evocations? What are you trying to do here? I want to rip through the veil of reality, or at least bring forth the ghosts of the forest. Pouring enough energy into them, I should be able to give them a material form. Dan? And you're okay with this? I'm rather sure it won't work, but as I said, I'm curious and I'd like to see it. It won't work. Of course it won't work. Magic isn't real. Whatever class that is, he is trying to do here is doomed to fail. Yet I can't help but feel a bit uneasy. Klaus stands up from the table and walks up to a black box standing at the wall. The only thing here that doesn't fit this place. Okay, I don't like this. I agree with Dan. Nothing should happen, probably. But it doesn't stop me from disliking the idea. How does this ritual look? It's something I came up with myself. You see, in our science class. Club, I dabbled a bit with resonant frequencies. Certain frequencies stimulate different mediums, causing them to vibrate and react. Low enough frequencies resonate with living beings. I can't know for sure if that will work, but combining this with an invocation should let me call forth something. We're gonna stop a bit for the ad. Wanna break from the ads? And also, should we just do all class throughout tonight? <sighs> <sighs> Ad. Advertisement. We'll see how much there is. Actually, to someone who knows, how much is there left? I don't like the way you said something this isn't very reassuring you know let's suppose you somehow succeed what then then i'll know there's something beyond this isn't there another day no there's only two days klaus makes a circling gesture with his paw pointing at everything around us if you want to help me you can try humming the same pitch as i will be using i'm not sure if i want to help him but i won't lie a part of me wants to see where this will lead well, most likely nowhere. Meanwhile, Klaus kneels at the black box and clicks a power button on the back. The box reacts by emitting a short, ominous buzz. What's this, by the way? Some kind of subwoofer? Much better. It's a bass guitar amplifier. Oh, I didn't know you play bass. I don't. Klaus? Don't tell me you took a bass amplifier with yourself here. Why not? It's a bit heavy, but I put my clothes inside and used it as my suitcase. This shouldn't surprise me, probably. It's puzzling, but then so is everything Klaus has done so far. An opposite would be unexpected. Why not indeed? Klaus plugs in some sort of pedal effect to the amp and then fishes out a microphone from the openings in the back, plugging it into the effect. The microphone should start picking up some frequencies from the surroundings, and the feedback loop will make them progressively louder. I just need to be careful not to blow the amp. Dan, can you turn off the light? Sure. Now quiet. Klaus turns on the effect and starts playing around with the knobs. He can't hear anything yet, really. Soon enough, a muffled low tone emits from the amp. Klaus sits down and starts humming, harmonizing with the tone. He plays around with the knobs, turning something up. It's getting loud. Really loud. It sounds like the sound is coming from the inside of my skull. 
It's painful to listen to. It doesn't hurt my ears, but I can feel it throughout my whole body. I wouldn't be surprised if they could hear this, that in the guest house all the way from here. How far is it even? I didn't, I don't know how long it took me to get here, but it seems so close. I, I could go there without even moving if I wanted to. Huh. Funny. Only after a long moment do I notice I'm humming along. Deep rumble rising within my chest and reverberating in my throat blends with the droning tone. It tickles a bit. My skin tickles too, or maybe that's more of a tingling sensation. I want to giggle, but then I'd have to stop humming. I lift my paws and look at them. The fur on them seems to ripple. I stand up from the chair and try to walk forward. The air is thick and electrifying, but I push forward through it. Am I in a nightmare? What am I even doing here? My snout is open and I feel like I'm laughing, but no sound other than a low hum escapes my maw. My legs are heavy. Each step is a struggle. My tail throws me out of balance instead of helping me. Maybe I should lie down instead. Why don't I move at all? But I push forward to the exit. After what seems like an eternity, I finally reach the door. Grab the handle with my wet paws and... Uh... And I'm going to switch to the other microphone for this because I feel like it needs to be spooky. And there we go. Days passing by and fading into the night. Doors opening and closing. Stars shining and falling across the endless sky. Is this what life is? I feel like I've lost something. I try to remember what, but it slips away whenever I'm close to grasping it. Maybe if I remembered, I would know why I'm here. I'll bring some board games. I know you like Dickhead. I can try borrowing it from my brother. Nice. Are you going to get us some alcohol, Arvo? It shouldn't be a problem. In the worst case, I'll ask Lassie to buy it for me. Who else is invited? I wanted to have a smaller party this year. I invited you two, Lassie and Nico. What about... No. I don't really want to see him. What happened between you two? I don't want to talk about it. He turned out to be a different person than I thought he was. Just believe me, okay? I'd rather not have you talk with him either, and definitely don't mention this to him. You'll find out anyway, Arvo. You can't avoid him forever. I can. There's something cold and metallic under my paw. I feel the smooth edges and flat surface in the dark. It's a door handle. I press it and open the door. Behind them, there's a classroom painted in beige. It smells of chalk and autumn. Sunlight floods the room, filtered through a tree growing just outside. There's someone sitting at a desk facing the opposite direction focused on scribbling in the notebook in front of them. A pair of gray woven ears perk up when I peek in, and he starts turning towards me. I close the door before he can see me. It feels like a dream, but it's not. I want to touch something beyond this one. No, I need to. The thought that there's nothing beyond what I see terrifies me. I'm afraid I will never feel at home here. That this world will never be enough. There has to be something more. 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 Oh, fuck. Ah, Fane. Arvo. Hey, Arvo. Hi, Dan Chorus. Huh? A large wolf looms over me, looking at me with concern. 
you seemed to be lost in thoughts. I did? Wait, what just happened? My voice is raspy and my throat feels like a barren desert. I tried... I focus on Dan to stop myself from panicking. I think we lost the power. I think I fried the delay. I hope the amplifier is okay. It wasn't cheap. I check the fuses and they're intact, but the lights don't work. I sit back on the bench listening to these two. That's what they're worried about after that? The fuses might be old, or they could have been bypassed. I don't know. I didn't fiddle with the electrical wiring here. It's not my area of expertise. Hmm. Now what? There's no range here, so we can't call any services. I think the best course of action would be to go to the guest house and ask them to let us make a call. A good idea. Man, this sucks. I was sure I started to see something just before the power went out. It was worth trying. I would accept this as a defeat, though. So they didn't see anything? Whatever it was, did it only hit me? Was I just hallucinating? No, definitely no. Maybe we materialized something that interfered with the power. Ever heard of Occam's Razor? No, but it sounds edgy. Very amusing. Occam's Razor is a general principle that states that the simplest possible explanation is usually the best one. It's very useful. I suggest you remember it. And what is the simple ex simplest possible explanation here? That we, that we blew the fuse somewhere. Correct. Now let's go to the guest house. Argo, are you feeling alright? You look somewhat pale. Did you see something weird? No, everything is fine. I just got lost in thoughts. As you said, let me put on my jacket and we can go. It's a quiet night. The light wind caresses my face gently, bringing me back to reality. Everything around me feels hyper-realistic, as if I was looking at the world for the first time. And its beauty's almost breathtaking. I touch one of the trees with my bare paw. The bark is hard and dry under beneath my paws. When was the last time I touched a tree? I can't remember. Likely when I was a kid. My companions are completely silent. Dan looks at the moon, keeping his paws in the pockets of his coat. And Klaus looks straight ahead. Weird, I don't see any lights yet. It's early and dark. Light should be on in every second room in the hotel. Yet I can't see anything between the trees. We walk out of the woods next to the guest house wall. All of the rooms are dark. Only behind some of the windows there's a faint glow of torchlight. Only the common room is somewhat brighter. Dan walks up to its window to peek inside, and in the same moment, someone shines a torch on him from the inside. I'm afraid we aren't the only ones without power. There's a group of students inside sitting with a torch in the light of the fireplace only. Let's go to the entrance. Someone at the reception should have a mobile phone. You two go there. I'll go through the terrace to my room to see if I got a spare delay pedal. I'll see you in a while. That would be the weirdest spare thing anyone has ever brought to a science camp. Spare socks, I don't understand fully, but I wouldn't suspect even Miko of bringing a spare effect pedal. He's troubled but earnest. I hope he didn't give you any problems. Not too many. We walk around the corner and arrive at the entrance. Dan opens the door and holds them open for me. So I climb the steps and enter the dark lobby. Oh, that is creepy. Hi, Klaus. At times I feel an invisible paw guiding me. At times everything makes perfect sense. Like a cup filled to the brim. Everything is saturated with meaning. Because what is life without a higher purpose? At times I feel an invisible paw guiding me. I close my eyes and purr as it strokes my head. I close my eyes and purr as it strokes my head. Its touch is gentle and caring. It's a ray of light reaching deep into my soul. All this, it's a chain of events, logically interconnected, leading me somewhere. Like pieces of a mosaic, elements of a bigger picture, a jigsaw falls into place and everything clicks. Because nothing happens without a reason. At times I feel an invisible paw guiding me. Whatever it is, it brought me here. I can never doubt it. The power went out for a reason. Maybe I was about to uncover something that I shouldn't. It can't be a coincidence. Maybe it's something entirely different. This time the reason will reveal itself. It has to. I close my eyes, waiting. Klaus, are you going? I'll catch you later. Go ahead, I'm not yet hungry. Okay, see you later. And Arvo. He surely must have a role in all this, too. It can't be a coincidence that he lost the key and had to look for another room. And why did he agree to stay with me? I better keep him close. I remember that one day when it rained outside my house, but when I walked through, I was completely dry. I couldn't explain it. Nothing could, but I couldn't doubt my senses. 
around that time I first started meditating. Once I was so close to leaving my body. Not enough discipline. Too many distractions. I need to get there again. Only have to find the right door. Maybe I should start here. My head is throbbing with pain. I don't think I like I don't think I like these frequencies that resonate with living things. The corridors seem to too bright, almost blinding, after that whole evening spent in the forest in Dan's hut. I touch the walls to make sure they really exist and I am here. Can I really trust my senses after what I experienced today? This place seems far removed from the dim interior of Dan's hut, hidden deep within the forest, almost like a natural extension of it growing from the ground. There I was, well into the wilderness's domain. Here I'm safe, guarded by thick walls within which the nature was tamed and reduced to the role of decoration. The wooden veneer under my paw pads is nothing like the living tree outside with its rough bark and twisted branches. He said wooden veneer! Eco-friendly wooden veneer. Are those- is that galvanized square steel? <laughs> That's it. Darvo? Oh, hey there! Are you going to the cafeteria only now? Yeah, why? The food is almost out. It's silly that everyone assumed whoever wanted to eat already did. Oh, not good. I better hurry up there, then. Frankly, I have no idea what time it is. Here up north, it gets dark so early that I lost the sense of time completely. Good luck. Thanks, and good night to you. Good night. The cafeteria indeed turns out to be almost empty. There's one last remaining plate of food on the table. I wanted to be a good friend and grab Klaus a plate, too, but it looks like I won't be able to do even that. Someone stands up from their chair and approaches the lone last plate. In a few jumps, I cross the room and throw myself between the plate and the aggressor. It's Lake. I didn't recognize him without a shirt. Lake! Hey! Arva, what are you doing here? Defending my supper. Sorry, I didn't know it was you. Only had the Lexo for dinner because of class. I need that meal. It's fine. I'll throw no one else would come. Where were you? You missed dinner. You were afraid you got lost or something. I left you a message. Oh, no, I wasn't far, but it's a long story. I was just leaving. I want to take the plate with me, but you can tell me about it tomorrow on the buff. Or you can write to me later when you have a moment. Sure you're off to your room already? Yeah, later. I have things to do today. So, see you tomorrow. Yeah, good night. And Lake leaves too. Meanwhile, the cafeteria emptied completely. Everyone left. Only my headache stayed with me. I grab the last plate of food and sit at one of the tables. I start eating almost mechanically. The food tastes nice, but my mind is still elsewhere. I barely mind the stifling silence that gripped the room, punctuated only by the lettuce crunching under my teeth. Think of everything that unfolded before my eyes in Dan's hut. Klaus! Ah! He's a little freaky. Is he even here? No, obviously. But he left the door unlocked. I turn on the light. The room looks the same as this morning. Even Klaus is missing as well. I should go back to my room and go to sleep. It's been a long day. I'm worried and confused and my head is killing me. But I don't. I keep standing in the door, staring into the empty room. I don't want to be alone now, but I'm not too keen on recalling the events of the evening to anyone uninvolved. Klaus might come back soon. If I want to catch him, I better wait for him here. Perhaps a moment when I could have just turned away and left has already passed. I close the door, leaving them unlocked, and lie down on the bed I was sleeping in yesterday. Then I close my eyes and turn my thoughts inwards. Every fiber of my being vibrates. I feel the whole of my body bending the mattress down. The scenes from the whole day flashes before my eyes. The lectures, the forest, dance, hut, and... Whatever it was, I feel like it woke me up from a kind of slumber. Everything feels sharper now, more real. I left the hut and really felt the weight of the forest bearing down on me. The fresh arctic air on my face. The fuck was that? Oh, like a whisper speaking of truths long forgotten. In the night sky... If I focus enough, I can feel the snow under my paws, covering the ground. I should leave my door more often and just walk around, or take a metro to the outskirts of the city and spend some t more time with nature. I had no idea how much I missed it. It's winter here already, the coziest season. Time of hot chocolate, fairy lights, pecan pies, pecan pies, the holiday gifts, they used to bring me so much joy. Do you think there really is a solid meaning? Of course not. Nothing makes sense here when you think about it. We don't even know where we came from. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, we should do it more often. 
It's something I came up with myself. What do you want to prove with this? That my existence isn't pointless. It's nebulous, it's formless, it slips out of your grasp. I'm not even sure if I exist. If you don't exist, then I don't exist either. Isn't it irrelevant? No matter what you believe, the world around you functions just the same. It's only your understanding of it that changes. But there's a comfort in that. In the inexhaustible indifference, Klaus presses a dagger to my side. You're wrong. He holds it so that the sharp tip only grazes my skin. To begin healing, you must first acknowledge the wound. I grab it. Instead of the cold blade, my palm meets something soft and leathery. Something underneath me rustling as I shuffle around. I put a palm to my side and pull out a crumpled piece of paper. The silvery pencil trails off hastily written yet elegant letters shine in the moonlight, but my mind, clouded with sleep, takes a moment to string them into words. If you'll need to find me, enter the door on the right in the corridor leading to the sauna. Klaus. I don't need to get scared by any... Oh, what the fuck? Oh, what the hell? Hang on. I forgot to make that save. I need to make that save. Oh, what the fuck happened? No worry about it later. My brain is fucked. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did they make an autosave? I pray to god they did. Kind of. Hang on, I'm going to make this save. I'm going to make this save. Let me make this save. Uh, fuck, uh, page three. Yes. And now! We're back. Oh no, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Because you know exactly what time it is. Stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.